Train Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the NBA's dumbest wannabe gangster. Before we dive into this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. What we got here? Out of the five major American sports, <clears throat> basketball is the hardest sport to make it to the pros. One in 12,363 players, or 0.008% of players, will get signed to a professional team. To put that in perspective, if every dot on a basketball represents one potential pro signee, three dots out of the 35,000 will make it. The NBA also happens to pay their players the best, with the average salary per player being roughly $10 million per year. That's correct. They be getting that bread. They be getting that bread. Year which would place you in the top 0.1% of earners in the United States. So someone like John Morant, securing the extraordinary job as a professional basketball player means he has basically won the lottery of life. He worked extremely hard and is being rewarded at the highest level for his efforts. And instead of building his legacy and setting up potential generational wealth for him and his family, he's deciding to take on the role as a gangster rapper. Assaulting people, flexing weapons on Instagram, and trying to prove to the world that he really is about that life. Only person who made- I think- I think Ja, you just- He's young and he got a lot of money now. Know what I'm saying? Uh, so being young and having that much money and not coming from, I mean, I, I don't think he come from like bad or struggled or anything. I'm not sure about his life, but, uh, that much money and to be young and, and, and to be so famous and know what I'm saying? That's a lot to put on a person. That, that's a lot to put on. But yeah, he, I'm a huge John Moran fan, bro. A huge John Moran fan, bro. Uh, he's pure entertainment on a basketball court. Uh, with his high flying is incredible, bro. Uh, he's an incredible basketball player, but the trash talk, like all of that, I, I, all the dancing on the court, all the showboat, I'm with all of that, bro. I, it looks like he just out there having the best time of his life, just having a good time. That's it, and, and I like seeing that. It, it's fun to watch for me. Uh, but yeah, all this off the court activity, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, Sometimes we getting a little out of hand. If we getting a little out of hand with it, I agree with that. But I'm a Ja fan. Made the NBA to go back to the hood. Ja grew up in South Carolina in a small, quiet country town called Dalzell. Dalzell is a few miles outside of Sumter, which is ranked as the 46th most dangerous city in South Carolina. He went to Crestwood High School, where student academic performance is just about average with the entire state. It's pretty safe to say that Ja grew up in a very average American suburb, surrounded by slightly above average crime rate, and went to an average school. We have no reason to believe that he is a gangster or is gang affiliated in any way. He has no criminal record, no history of violence, and really only a few minor arguments on the court, which is extremely normal. Ja has two loving parents who have always supported his basketball dreams and are very proud of him. His mother describes him as a genuinely loving person. His father, T, used all of his free time to privately train Ja and help him become the superstar he is today. Morant is only 23. He was drafted as the number two overall pick by the Memphis Grizzlies in 2019. He won Rookie of the Year in his first season after averaging nearly 18 points per game, and every year his stats have just gotten better and better. Ah! This year he's been on fire, with a 27 point average while shooting 46%. Oh In the 2022 offseason, Ja signed a five year extension with the Memphis Grizzlies. This contract would yes, earn him 25% of the salary cap yearly, which is estimated to be around $40 million per year, putting him roughly in the top 10 earners in the entire NBA. That's crazy. That's Ja. His performance in the first five seasons are reminiscent of Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, and Allen Iverson. Ironically, AI and Ja have even more in common, indulging in a lifestyle that is synonymous with rappers, more specifically, gangster rappers. Allen Iverson liked to party, go to clubs, drink, and gamble, which ultimately led to the downfall of his career. Ja Morant, as a recent, likes to show people how tough he is. On January 3rd, 2023, TMZ reported that Ja Morant was allegedly involved in the attack of a minor during a basketball game in July at his Tennessee home. The two got into an argument and the teenager said Ja approached him, put his chin on his shoulder, and asked a bystander, should I do it to him? Then struck him with a closed fist, 
knocking him to the ground. From there, Ja continued sticking him while on the ground, and another man jumped in and began hitting oh, the boy wow. as well. Officers in the dock say they noted the teenager had a large knot on his head. Ja says he did strike the boy, but he was acting in self-defense after the boy threw a basketball at him. Morant told officers the teenager made verbal threats stating he'd light his house up as he was being escorted off the property. There are also separate reports that say that Ja hit the boy 12 to 13 times and even went into his house, grabbed a gun, and put it in his waistband, taunting oh, wow. the boy. Now, NBA news outlets were harping on the fact that the kid was 17, but to yeah. give Ja the benefit of the doubt, a 17-year-old these days most definitely could light your house up. The four people involved could and would light your house up. Involved in Pop Smoke's murder were 19, 18, 17, and 15. It's easy to see 17 and think of an innocent boy, but that may not be the case. The teenager did press charges, and the boy's mother demanded $20 million from ah, Grant, but dang. the charges were dropped due to insignificant evidence, and it was looking more like a false allegation for someone to make a quick payday off an NBA player. But four days before this fight, Ja had another police report filed by a security guard at a finish line in the Memphis Mall. The altercation started after Morant's mother had a dispute with an employee which led her to call her son. Ja showed up with nine men. A oh verbal confrontation God. transpired and then a member of Morant's group pushed the security guard in the head. Morant then said, let me find out what time he gets off, which made the guard want to file a report as he felt threatened by Morant's statement. Now, Ja had the opportunity to show the world how gangsta he was when Shannon Sharp pressed the Grizzlies on the sidelines of their match against the Lakers. Shannon yelled at Dylan Brooks saying, he can't guard LeBron, to which Dylan responded, fuck you. Shannon retaliated and stood on the sideline begging for them to get in his face. Ja's father T even got up and barked at him a little bit, but nobody wanted to get up and close to Shannon. Ja yelled from across the court, and the Grizzlies... And as soon as people tried to usher Shannon away, that's when the Grizzlies decided to try and press him. Shannon later said, They don't want this smoke. They don't want problems. But I wanted everything they had. Fast forward one week later and Ja got in. We all knew it wasn't nothing gonna happen. We all, we all knew that. Shannon arguing with the Grizzly, Grizzly arguing. I ain't nothing gonna happen. It's just talking. You know what I'm saying? In the heat of the moment, the, the intensity of the game. We are into an altercation with Chris talk. Duarte of the Indiana Pacers. Chris pushed him three times while Ja repeated, don't touch me. But Ja had some plans for retaliation after the game. Acquaintances of Grizzly star Ja Morant aggressively confronted members of the Pacers traveling party near the team's bus in the loading area of FedEx Forum Arena. And later, someone in a slow-moving SUV, which Morant was riding in, trained a red laser on them. No we don't know way. if Ja was the one who pointed the laser, and we also don't know if that laser was attached to a gun. But was Ja trying to do the first post-NBA game drive-by? I guess by comparison, it's not as bad as Gilbert Arenas. The Wizards player in 2009 brought a gun into the locker room and threatened uh. to shoot one of his teammates over a card game. But let's not forget that last year at 2 in the morning, Ja said to a Twitter op, that it's free to see how hollows feel, referring to hollow tip bullets. And if that evidence wasn't enough, just last week, Ja went on Instagram Live while he was at the yeah. strip club and flashed a gun to the camera. This action prompted a two game suspension, as well as Ja deactivating all of his social media pages. Obviously, 99% of people denounced this behavior, but some people like Gilbert Arenas and Paul Pierce defended Ja, basically saying that. So I don't care what y'all care about. What y'all say about Ja carried a gun after I was stabbed? Yeah, I don't know what he's going through. Everybody got something to say until you really know what's going on in someone's life. When you black and rich, you're a target, period. They understand why he carries a gun. Ja has everything going right for him. He's living a life that's near impossible to achieve. So why does he want to run around and act gangsta now? Bro, you not hard. That's not your life. People that in that life would give anything to be in your life. Damn, I swear sports and music are so synonymous because we want to be them and they want to be us. Those lyrics come from Thank Me Now, the final track on Drake's you, 2010. You can thank me now. Say, so, oh, that was such a dope line. That's around the time that your idols become your rivals. You make friends with Mike, but got an AI in for your survival. That was prime Drake. That was prime. That was prime Drake. <laughs> all right, all right, keep it going. This is about Debut album, Thank Me Later. Rappers love the esteem, the money, and the safety that basketball players have. But basketball players love the lifestyle that rappers have. We know that Ja loves NBA Youngboy. He is constantly going on IG Live rapping along to his lyrics. 
Youngboy has a way of making his nefarious lifestyle sound fun and exciting, even though it's extremely stressful and he likely has a target on his back 24-7. Like we said before, Ja is from a small suburb in the middle of South Carolina, and we have reason to believe he's had a pretty solid and stable upbringing. He moved to Memphis, which is known for being a dangerous city, home to a lot of famous rappers. He became the face of the Grizzlies franchise, so everyone in the city loves him. When he goes to the club, where real Memphis gangsters probably hang out, they likely show him love. Even rival gangsters in Memphis could probably bond over the Grizzlies being their favorite team. He's getting a taste of their lifestyle, the lifestyle that his favorite rappers glamorize. They are bringing him places he never would have been able to go, and he probably isn't too worried about his safety because he doesn't have enemies. He wants the power and the respect that comes with having street cred, but he doesn't have to risk his life for it, and he has a guaranteed $10 million yearly salary. Ja has everything they don't, and he wants the one thing they have, but the one thing that they have requires them to be alert and prepared to risk their life at any given moment. Some people say 23 years old is enough to know better, but there's no doubt that a small reason why he's acting out is due to his age. 23 with enough money to do whatever he wants is dangerous, especially when his father is also indulging in his son's success. As, bro, why, why does dad look like he could be Usher brother, bro? Be Usher brother, Usher older brother, bro. The NBA definitely wants to see Ja succeed, but if he continues down this path, he will be ostracized by the media, and eventually it will be too risky for any team to bring him on. His career will be cut short similar to other players who have tried these antics in the past. And the funny part about that is, his new friends that are bringing him into this lifestyle won't be there for him when he isn't a star basketball player anymore. Nah, but yeah, yeah. I, I do agree that Ja off the off the court action, you know what I'm saying? That like, it's like, Ja, come on, man. Come on, man. You got to know better than this stuff. But like you said, he's 23, enough money to do anything he want, uh, go anywhere he want, uh, and the music you listen to and all that stuff does have, you know what I'm saying? Have an impact on your life. And you know what I'm saying? But uh, like I said, I'm a huge Ja fan, bro. Uh, I... I off the court off the court antics out of the equation. I love the trash talk. I love the showboating. I love the pure entertainment when he's on the court. Uh, I, I love watching the dude. He's a dog. Bro. He's a dog on the court, bro. Uh, but that's all we got for this. You guys got the fa uh, favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy Dina out.